Hey everybody, how's it going? Hope you're having a lovely day. So today I'd like to talk about a video that came out from Microsoft on how to open up the Surface SE laptop. A lot of people have been emailing me because I talked about a shareholder resolution that happened a while back where the Microsoft shareholders were demanding right to repair and this is a step forward. So they have went from creating a device that you literally had to break to open and get into. There was no getting into this thing without destroying it to a device that you could take apart where they are releasing a guide on how to take it apart that is publicly available over here. Here's how you open it. Here's how you unplug stuff, take it apart. And they're also releasing videos that demonstrate how you take it apart. Now, there's a few things that I want to go over here just from the perspective as someone who runs a laptop repair shop in New York City for the past 13 years professionally. By the way, that's 240 miles that away, which is a uh, kind of why I'm smiling right now, but I digress. Uh, this is, um, this is going to get to give you my perspective on it and you know what I think in general of this video and the move forward. So I thought to myself, okay, this is cool. They're, they're changing. They're, they're, they're changing their perspective. They're changing the way they see things. At the end of this windowscentral.com article, it says, and I quote, perhaps right to repair is gaining ground in Redmond. So I did what, uh, what I usually do when a customer brings me something and they ask me to fix it. So I went to all my different parts suppliers, domestically and internationally, and I asked if I could find basic parts to this. And they all said no. And then I pinged my Discord, which has about 12,000 people in it, and I said, hey, 12,000 people. Can any of you find a part to this device? Because I can see that if I wish to buy this device, I can, as long as I have 252 bucks, uh, you, you, you can buy this device and it will ship tomorrow. So it's available, but I can't find parts to it. Can any of you, because maybe I have a blind spot here. And all anybody was able to find me was one device that I think had a salvage trackpad or something that was online used. That was it. So no supply chain. And then there was a comment that really resonated with me. It said, and I quote, for this is from Arnas, yeah, it's cool that you could take it apart by yourself and all, but then what the fuck are you supposed to do? Look at it hard enough that it fixes itself? And this is where I think it's important to be vigilant. One of the things that, that was a bit aggravating to me when the independent repair provider program came out in mid-2019 is that before any details even came out about this program, you had so many journalistic outlets talking about how this is Apple changing their stance, right to repair as one, blah, blah, blah. And then just a few months later, when I decided to actually read through some of the materials in the program, when some people were so kind as to break their non-disclosure agreement and share the details of the program with me, it was at that point that I recognized that this program was a complete PR stunt that I discussed in this video that I did in the end of December 2019. You couldn't get access to, par to parts that you needed. You couldn't get access to the LCD by itself. You couldn't get access to a charge port for a phone. You couldn't get board user schematics for the motherboard. You couldn't buy parts to MacBooks at the time when that program first came out. You couldn't get a uh, you had to wait a very long period of time before you were able to get access to parts. You had to take down the customer's information and home address and all this stuff and log it before you could order the part that you need. You couldn't stock stuff. They changed certain elements when it comes to stocking, but you still can't get board views, schematics, chips, any of the things that I usually use to do my job. But for some reason, this was touted as a win for right to repair. Recently, they also announced another program I talked about in this video when I learned how to have significantly better lighting. Unfortunately, I'm kind of going back into this lighting with this apartment, but here I was talking about them making parts available to everybody. One thing that's interesting here is that they've decided, they said, we'll, we will make parts and manuals available to all. They don't talk about whether it's a schematic. They don't talk about whether it's a board view. They don't actually tell you what parts they're going to be available. Again, am I going to be able to now finally purchase an iPhone charge port? They say they will make parts available to MacBooks. They don't say what models and what years at the end of next year. Yet this was touted as a win for right to repair, and it got this pretty much what lots of modern day tech journalism is, where one person reports on something and then everybody races to get clicks immediately by reporting on that same piece, often doing a damn near direct copy and paste of what the last person said, and it gives the public the impression, oh, I guess you got what you wanted. And again, as a laptop repair shop owner, my first question, if you say that something is now repairable, that you're going to respect repair, blah, 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 oh, look, we won, is okay, if somebody comes in and says, I have a problem with my trackpad or my screen or my keyboard or, you know, uh, like it's not, ch my USB port's no longer working, can I get access to the parts and everything else that I need to do my job? And right now, the answer is uh, no. I mean, if somebody walked in with a Surface SE and said, can you fix this? My answer is no, because I can't get parts 
anywhere. And again, if you're able to, uh, it would be interesting. And again, it does look like if I wish to purchase this, uh, I can purchase it. And I have a bit of a radical statement here, which is that if I am able to give a company money to purchase a device, I should simultaneously be able to give them or an associated company money to be able to purchase parts to fix that device if something goes wrong with it. Because I know somebody's probably going to say, well, Lewis, you don't understand. It's new. It just came out. This came out. Like, it, you know, they, they just came out. with the, the device came out just a few weeks ago. You can't expect them to have parts of it. They had parts available to make it. Did they not? Why can't we get parts to, to fix it? I mean, it's just, it's a basic thing. They're also doing this with a $250 laptop. So again, if you look at this, I can buy this for 250 bucks. Are they going to release manuals, diagrams, schematics, board views, everything else, as well as parts so to fix a $1,000 Surface, $1,500 Surface, $2,000 Surface, $3,000 Surface, $4,000 Surface? Because at the end of the day, while there is most certainly demand and utility in fixing many different items regardless of price, Price is going to play a role in whether or not there is a large market to fix it versus replace it. And while repairability of a $250 device is important, if you are selling devices that are $1,000, $2,000, $3,000, and $4,000, I, I kind of a little bit, just a little bit more interested in what you have to do with the rest of it. So what I'm, I'm not trying to crap on Microsoft here or what they're doing because this is a step in the right direction. What I want to impart onto all of you is to not just see headlines like that and then assume, oh, look, right to repair one. They're done. Because uh, I didn't even really think of this until I started reading the comments and the emails that I was getting. But there are a lot of people out there that may not follow this every day, and I don't blame them for it, that will think, oh, look, they won. It's done. You got what you wanted. When in reality, we're, I, if somebody brought me this, I, I have no idea where I would get a part to fix any of this stuff because I, I can't find them anywhere, it is to view this through the lens of, okay, they did this. Now let's, say if the, let's see if they'll live up to it. Right to repair is about more than the right to PR, right to good marketing, or right to good headlines. We, we, right to repair is about actually being able to do the work. It's about actually being able to get access to the parts and the schematics and everything else. And it's about more than just saying we're, quote, moving in that direction. It's good that they're moving in that direction, and I support them moving in that direction, but what I do not support is the idea that we're there or that we're done uh, because a video was released. And I, I like that the video was released. I like that the manual was put out there, even if you know I'm a little... Uh, I, I would disagree with the idea of e explaining how to replace the display assembly rather than the LCD cell by itself, which is a much more economically viable repair. Uh, but it's really important to understand that this is not the end. Uh, it's, again, the Apple Independent Repair Provider Program, massive PR stunt. Them saying they'll sell parts to end consumers, it could be a good program, or that could be a massive PR stunt. We don't know yet because the details of that program are not going to get finalized until probably the end of the year when it comes to MacBooks. When you read stuff like this, read it with that little bit of healthy skepticism. Is this company doing this for good PR, or do they actually mean it? And what I would ask is that, you have that healthy skepticism and that you assume that the right to repair side has not won until there is proof and evidence that things are actually available. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. That's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye now.